Being one of the greatest novels in American literature, Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain has many memorable moments to offer. Welcome to MatchWojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments in Huckleberry Finn. The Angel of Death. Number 10. Huck Lives with Pat. I ain't gonna let you. I'm gonna kill you. You won't come for me no more. Pap, I ain't the angel of death. I'm only Huck. Please, Pap. Having been kidnapped by his father, Huck finds himself in quite the sticky situation. Huck is constantly beaten by his drunk dad who, at one point, goes so far as to pull a knife on his son. This is certainly one of the darker parts of the novel, for we truly see the extreme struggles of Huck's life. Number 9, so Huck right Leaves now, Pat. After months of being beaten down, Huck finally takes a stand. He decides to leave his father in a canoe that he found. This is the first time that Huck makes an important life decision on his own, and it pays off. After Huck escapes the wrath of Pat, he never sees his father alive ever again. Number 8, Huck Finds Hello, Jim. Jim. Glory be. You's a ghost. I ain't a ghost, Jim. But you's dead. Your pap come running into town yelling that Robinson killed you. Well, I tricked it up so pap would think I was dead. But I ain't. After drifting down the river for a few miles, Huck decides to rest on a nearby island. Little does he know that Jim, Miss Watson's runaway slave, is on the island too. When Huck and Jim finally cross paths and chat for a while, they eventually decide to travel together. This is the start of the most important friendship in the novel. You don't know what a feud Number is. seven, Huck meets the Grangerfords. Well, uh, a feud is like this. A man has a quarrel with another man, and he kills him. Then the other man's brother kills him. And then all the brothers on both sides joins in. And then all the cousins chips in. By and by, everybody's all killed out. Then there ain't no more feud. Huck stumbles across a house in the woods, and upon inspection, meets the Grangerfords. The Grangerford family is known for their feud with the rival Shepherdson family. Despite not knowing why they are feuding, the two families do not hesitate to hurt and even kill each other. Mark Twain is alluding to how people in the 1800s were okay with slavery solely because it was a societal norm. I should. Number six. Let Huck meets the royal yourself. frauds. This here is none other than a great nobleman, cheated of his rightful title. He, gents, is the Duke of Bilgewater. A duke? I am. He was untimely ripped from his cradle, and mulin and pukin was tossed into the world to fence for himself at the tender age of one. I was? The tragedy has chased the facts from his mind. Poor little child. When Huck decides to help out two random men he sees running away from a town, he enters a world of trouble. The two men tell Huck that they are royalty, and that they must be listened to. Because Huck fails to call them out as liars, in an attempt to keep the peace, Huck and Jim get dragged out along on many of the Duke and Dauphine's deceitful antics, scamming people from town to town. Tra la la la, the world's full of suckers. 
Number five, fake relatives. Alas, alas, after 28 years to have missed him by a hair. How can the royal frauds get more than they bargained for in this encounter? The Duke and the Dauphin attempt to scam a group of young orphans out of their lavish sum of inheritance money. This puts Huck in a dangerous situation, for he becomes entangled in the scam. It's a miracle! Number 4, Huck's Honesty. Alright, Percy. If we ain't the Reverend, then who are we? He's the Duke of Bilgewater, and you're the King of France. <laughs> oh my God. Huck is no stranger to pulling a fast one on unsuspecting victims, and he is quite the jokester. However, when the Duke and Dauphine try to steal the inheritance money for a group of orphans, it is too far even for Huck. He must decide whether or not to tell someone, choosing the moral path. Huck tells one of the orphans about the royal frauds. This is a big moment for Huck because it is the first time he tells the truth in a significant situation. Number 3. Jim Disagrees I'm grateful for you teaching me Patagonia and all that. How come we just can't wait till it get dark and sneak across the border, huh? Oh, you get caught for sure, Jim. This way, we get free board and lodging all the way to Chicago. At the start of the book, Jim would have followed Huck to the edge of the world. He saw Huck as his superior because of the color of his skin. Now, Jim sees Huck as equal, and he has no problem sharing his opinion and speaking up with Huck. Number 2. Huck joins a gang. At the start of the novel, Huck is just a follower of Tom Sawyer, and although he reverses into the state toward the end of the novel, Huck eventually becomes his own person, making his own decisions based on his own ideas of morality. By just going with the flow at the start of the novel, Huck shows how easily he conforms to societal norms before his adventure with Jim. Number 1. Huck and Society uh, I wouldn't be no good in that store, Jim, unless I got all civilized and... I've been there before. At the end of the novel, Huck has truly experienced the society and culture of the United States in the 1800s. Concluding that he dislikes the hypocritical way of his society, he decides to move out west in order to reinvent himself. This signals the end of his adventure with Jim and the end of the novel. Right to me, Huck. I can't write too good. Thanks for watching Match Wojo's Top 10 Huckleberry Finn Moments. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell for notifications. Bye.